What happens when four American brothers travel with one German girl through the most beautiful country in the world? Really fun and really chaos. Now everyone will know that I'm American. Laura, can you check my outfit for any Americanness? I don't want to be recognized. My girlfriend Laura and I, who live in southern Germany, drove down to Italy to meet some of my brothers. My brother Mikey plays American football in Parma for the Parma Panthers. My other brothers, Andy and Anthony, both came in from California. And of course, an adventure like this was full of chaos. I missed my connecting flight by two minutes. Some peaceful moments. Oh. And a little bit of violence. <laughs> Well, you guys, I'm doing it with you. <laughs> Chaotic. So the problem with Andy is that he's in. <laughs> this is what happens when four American guys go on a crazy road trip with one German girl. Unfortunately, the trip started off with bad news. I sprint to the airport with 100 pounds of bags, and I missed the takeoff by two minutes. Yeah, 2 a.m. I missed my connecting flight by two minutes. Since I missed the flight, I had to sleep on the airport floor, and my flight was pushed to 3 p.m. the next day. Oh, man. Okay, so... Uh, all right, so can you send me your flight number for the one that gets in tomorrow? Anthony said he was going to get some sleep and then decide in the morning if he was even going to still come. So with that, unfortunately, in the back of our minds, we headed down to Italy. We are headed south to Italy to meet some Alfieri's. No, you're in Italy when you have to stop and get toll tickets very often. We're in Parma now and we're getting directions from our, we're just getting someone's breaking into our car. Hi, Laura Vigetz. Hi, good. Okay. Okay, which way should I go on the roundabout? The way the roundabout goes. So turn left, that, yeah, this way, yeah. You're bad at direction. <laughs> Andy had made it to Parma the night before and was diving deep into the Italian experience. <laughs> What's up, Goo? Hey, good to see you. Hey, Laura. There we go. We got it. Okay. Italy, everything is beautiful. Except for some things I've noticed, things are smaller. The shower, smaller. I go and I bump my arms around, I can't extend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, we made it to Parma, we're walking into the old city and I get a little bit of Italian vibes. All the ceilings. Should I do the camera? <laughs> <laughs> just like, just like, imagine you're my brother and you're telling me something. So we're about to go to this church, and the church, the guy who painted the walls and the ceilings, he was commissioned by the city. So it was a government job. And so what he did was he painted, it was his life's work, 30 years. His painting is beautiful, it's lovely. And uh, when he finished it, the, the guys who painted and built it they said, this is ugly, this sucks, and they kicked him out of the city. <laughs> and he, that's, he was kicked out of the city. That's first. why you never work for the government. <laughs> Ron Swanson. <laughs> Anthony decided he would still come despite the loss of a day and a half. But we got some more bad news that morning from him. We are headed to Venice. His original flight was supposed to be LA to Chicago to Milan. After he missed the Chicago to Milan connection and slept on the airport floor, they got him a new flight to Brussels. And then instead of ending in Milan, his final leg would be to Venice. But on the way, we got these texts. They were headed back to the gate. Then his phone died. But we just kept driving towards the Venice airport in hopes that everything would just work out. <laughs> he made it! About 48 hours after I left California, I had arrived in Italy. The worst journey. Three and a half days later. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> he made it! Come on! You want to okay, Laura, thank you. Anthony, great job! Thanks, guys. Anthony, you had a fun journey! Alright, I'm ready to go home. There he is! <laughs> Venice is really cool. It's this magical city. It's floating, I guess. It's rocks and it's floating. I don't know how that works. The problem with Venice is that it's just raining. It only rains there. So we were there and it was raining the whole time. I used an umbrella for the first time in my life. Little brothers cracking each other's backs up there. Just got to Venice. It's very wet and rainy, but our place is very, very cool. We're gonna go explore a little bit and get drenched. 
so funny because Andy really wants to like kind of blend in and have European style and not stick out as the classic American. So he kept asking Laura about his outfits. Laura, <laughs> Laura, can you make sure you check my outfit for any Americanness? I don't want to be recognized. Okay. So I said, he looks really American and you look really American from the face. I don't know what. You look from the face could be Europe, but your style is American and Mikey screams German. <laughs> <laughs> So it was his goal to blend in with some European style. Uh, I don't have a nice European looking jacket. I only have a gray sweatshirt and it's rain. I need a jacket, I'm gonna go buy one. I didn't wear one out, so we gotta go find one. Good morning. It's okay. Thanks, bro. You're welcome, bro. Have a good day. Have a good day. Probably the first jacket I found. I put it on, it fit perfectly, it looked cool, and I bought it. Okay, glad to see you. And this is great. It was rainy, my shoes got wet, but it was really pretty. Just had a little lunch here in Venice, still very rainy. We walked a little bit faster, we're waiting for the brothers. Laura and I, the people who live in Germany, we're right on schedule, ready to get to the next thing and the next attraction, and the, uh, the brothers are dilly-dallying, they're back there somewhere. Nick is a, a traveling dictator, and so it's like really, it's on his schedule and really like rigid. That's not true, I actually just have the perfect scheduling and execution, so everyone should just follow my plan. Not like a dictator, more like a king. I'm like a traveling king. For the first time since we've been here, it is not pouring down rain. There he is. So we can actually enjoy the city a little bit. Look at these beautiful adult-sized coffees they got here. They're incredible. Although the double XL is the size of an American medium. Finally. In the end, we were all cold. Uh, we decided, okay, let's just grab a pizza, bring it back to our really cozy, cute, hidden apartment. We decided to watch a movie and eat pizza at home, which was so great. Mikey and Andy love wrestling. Every time that Andy and I reconnect in the physical realm of Earth, we have to wrestle uh, to uh, remind us of our roots. Go. Or else we won't be true friends together. Yeah. Good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Everything. Well. Well, okay. well, well, that's part of it. Well, well, well. Then at the end of the night, before we all went to bed, we FaceTimed with our sister, Jamie, and our nephew, Tommy. We're missing her and our other brother, Joey, on this trip. Oh, look at Smile, Tom. Tom. Touchdown. Oh my gosh, his overalls are so cute. I was very proud of Laura on this trip because you know, Germans, Germans like to have good structured plans. And this trip was the least structured, least planned trip ever. With my planning skills and Nick's flexibility, we make the best out of it, I would say. We are chasing the sun. I looked at peace and showed, okay, Wednesday afternoon, sun comes out. And I was like, to Nick, like, should we go to, uh, to Pisa? And he was like, okay, let's do it. Now we're gonna drive south. We have to drop Mikey off at the train station in Bologna so he can make it to Parma Panthers practice tonight. And then we are headed to Pisa and then Mikey's gonna meet us the next day in Florence. Here we go. Yeah, Riva Derchi. Bye, Mike. Bye, Mike. Come back to us. We'll see you tomorrow, right? Okay, see you tomorrow. Okay. And if you don't, it means I'm dead. <laughs> Bye. Laura's driving now, so she gets to listen to whatever she wants, and she chose a German podcast, Gemischt as Hack. <laughs> it's just random rambling, and Gem it's called Gemischt as Hack, which means mixed meat. <laughs> Gemischtes Hack was a big hit in the front seat. <laughs> the back seat, not so much. I'm lucky because we were so spontaneous. We had a great apartment right next to the tower, which was actually so cheap for four of us. Oh, sweet. Can you give me? I always wanted to uh, take a picture of this. I got to do the picture. I was on the wrong building though. I learned later which one it was, so I did still get the good one. We have the Leading Tower of Pisa right here, and uh, we got four tickets for 6.15. We're gonna get some dinner, and we're gonna go walk on up. We are walking up the Leaning Tower right now. Very crooked. 
The Leaning Tower of Pisa was very cool to see. It was one of those landmarks that like really kind of awestruck me, that was really cool for me to see in person. Anthony was assaulted by this crooked tower. So I smacked my head at full speed on the corner of the ceiling in the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Now there's a giant bump on my head and I'm worried I have a concussion. By the way, guys, if you have an iPhone, join us on Quiver for free at the link in the description. Anyway, Andy wanted to keep improving his European fashion. I did make a pretty big purchase for me, personally. I negotiated for this Italian handmade leather bag. Well, the bag goes very well with my jacket, and it'll, it'll complement it very nicely. I'll fit in with the European style. I believe. We are now headed to Florence and hopefully meet Mikey. Hopefully he found his way to Florence on his own. Let's we'll see. Wow, he survived. Is that yours? No, it's not. Oh, okay. Florence is what, like when you picture Italy, that's what you picture. Florence is definitely my favorite spot. Florence is lovely. It uh, has the best weather of all the towns that we've been at so far. And I was blown away how pretty the city is. All right, we made it to Florence and it is such a hassle to walk around with this big gimbal in a city, but uh, I'm gonna do it because it makes for such nice shots. I was actually surprised, first things first. The walking, wow. I never seen Americans walk this much. Resting my feet as Americans lean is the thing I've heard. So I am fulfilling the stereotype. Okay, remember when Mikey said this? Nick is a, a traveling dictator. That's actually not entirely true because I give free time. We have an allotted time by Nick for about 45 minutes to an hour of unstructured dilly-dally time. So right now we are participating in about 40 to 45 minutes of unstructured leisurely strolling. And what you, what you can do with this time is endless. You can walk around. Uh, for my unstructured leisure time, I'm gonna wander without maps and I'm gonna haggle. You can dilly-dally. You can stay um, within a 500 foot radius of Nick as long as he's within your eyesight. I did make everybody turn on their location on WhatsApp so we could track everybody. Maybe I am a totalitarian dictator. During our unstructured Dilly Dally time, Laura and I went and got these super famous sandwiches that Florence is super famous for. They were absolutely delicious, but a little bit too rich for me to where I actually felt sick later in the day. But I would recommend a few bites of them at least. We then visited a rooftop cafe at the suggestion of my good friend, Mike Gentili. We, we made it and there's room and we have the best views in Florence and it's awesome. Well, I've noticed that my skin's cleared up already and I think it's because of the food here. There's no chemicals in the food. What do we got? We got cheeseburger for okay. breakfast. And it is 10 a.m. I've eaten so much pizza and so many sweets and I still don't even think I'm getting chubby. Cheers. Here we go. That's it. Then, more walking. This time to get a beautiful view over the city. But we had some egregious American behavior on the walk. Can I take my shirt off here? This is a real question. I don't know. I haven't seen anybody with a shirt off. But I think it's fine. What are you doing? Laura, you're the resident European. What do you think? Sure. <laughs> Second shirt has come off in our party. Now everyone will know that we're, I'm <laughs> I'm Amis are here. I'm putting my shirt back on because I'm going to be surrounded by Europeans and I don't want to feel uncomfortable. That's smart. The view overlooking the city was fantastic. There was a bunch of Sahara sand in the air that day and it made for an interesting, foggy looking scene. On top of Florence, very beautiful. A little bit hazy and smoggy, but still very beautiful. Um, the best part about traveling is uh, a good reload in the middle of the day, go back to the hotel or Airbnb. You know, take a load off, lay down, and just sit on your phone for a while, and then you get hope again. And then you go out, go back out to the town, and then your hope dwindles, and you get tired, and you're like, all right, this kind of sucks. And then you go back and do another reload. So we came home and reloaded before dinner. Uh, Dunkin' Donuts, Ben Affleck. Eddie, please move your hand out of my head. so uncomfortable. But at dinner, we had a little problem. 
All right, after a nice little rest at the apartment, we're headed back out again and we're gonna get some dinner. And I've always heard about the Florentine steak. My grandmother said to get the Florentine steak, Andy. So I saw it on the menu. I saw it cost 18 euros. At least I thought it cost 18 euros, which was sounded like a bargain. And I got the steak and the guy was, the waiter was very surprised that I was getting it for myself. All for you, your steak, all for you? And I was like, yeah. I was expecting just like a normal sized steak, but uh, they came out and they served it to me and it was, about half of a cow. <laughs> All right, we're a little concerned about what the price of Andy's meal is going to be. What do you think it is? Over fifty dollars. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> what did the steak turn out to be? Well, I thought it was an eighteen dollars steak, and it was uh, sixty-five dollars. It was the Florentine steak. It was so good, though. We're now really sleepy. <laughs> but Great. first night, Andy is. Full. <laughs> yeah. First Never night that Andy's full. Yeah. One of the coolest trips of my life. It was so fun. Kind of a once in a lifetime opportunity to be able to travel through Italy with my brothers and my girlfriend to all these awesome cities. Uh, it was absolutely an incredible experience that I feel really lucky to have been able to done. If you haven't already, I would really like to encourage you to download Quiver, our iPhone app that I made with my brother Mikey, who you saw in this video. Uh, you can download it for free at the link in the description. It's a really fun, free app. We are starting to implement photo days now too, every once in a while, so we're getting a little bit more features. Would love to have you join the Quiver community. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching my YouTube videos. Really appreciate it. And I'll see you next time.